Amen. And if everybody, you know, I was sitting at the, at a, at, at, I was in Singapore at Ruth Chris Steakhouse on top of a skyscraper having lunch with, a, with the pastor of the largest church in Singapore and Leonard Ravenhill's son. How many know who Leonard Ravenhill is? One of the greatest revivalists ever. Sitting there with his son eating. And I'm like, look at you. I had already met him, already knew him. I had never met him in person. I don't know why he was in Singapore. But anyway, you know, all the intercessors were at the table. They'd come to meet me. They wanted to meet me, all these intercessors from Singapore. And this megachurch pastor and David Ravenhill was there. And so they were all singing my praises. They're like, oh, oh, we love your prayer call. Oh, we love your books. Oh, we love your, you would love this and we love that. And oh, it's so good to meet you. And David Ravenhill said, woe, if, woe to the prophets who all they speak is good things of you. It's the scripture. He was teasing me. He was teasing me. We we're friends. He was teasing me. But the point is, is that if you're a real prophet, you're going to make a lot of enemies. There's no prophet in the Old Testament that was ever popular. And the prophets today, man, let me just ask you a question. How many more of these prophets? How many more pictures of prophets do we need to see on social media posing? You know what they are? Poser prophets. They're poser prophets. Seriously, how many more prophets do we have to see on social media posing with their Cadillac or taking pictures of their new mansion that they bought on your back? How many more pictures do we need of prophets saying, you know, praise the Lord, look at my new whatever. Listen, go buy your whatever, but don't flaunt it. Seriously. I mean, they're like, look at me. Look at my perfect life. Can you imagine John the Baptist? Everybody hated him, man. Some people walked in the light he had for a season. I'm just saying, it's ridiculous. If you're a true prophet, people are not going to like you. There's going to be a remnant who accepts you, and there's going to be a lot of people who don't like you. They will try to discredit you because they don't like the word of the Lord. They despise the word of the Lord. We've got to get past all this mess. The times we're coming into, the pillow prophets are not going to be of any help to you at all. You better learn to hear from the Lord yourself or get connected with a house where there's a true prophet because the anointing flows from the head. And if you're up underneath one of them false prophets, you got a false anointing. And you're going to be responsible to Jesus Christ when you stand before him for every false prophecy you acted on and released instead of coming up under the word of God that never fails. Elijah Company, be there. I'm not playing. I'm surprised people keep coming back for Elijah Company. No, I mean, it's edifying, but I mean, I'm not playing. I'm not playing. This is not a game. People call themselves prophets, and for what? What are you doing? Have you ever had a warning in your life? Have you ever released a bold word? Have you ever released anything other than pillow prophecies, prosperity? Please. It isn't, the time is too short to be playing these games.